Hi. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hey. You know, when you said uh, that double mindedness is a monster through wrong doctrine, mm. we believe that we had a dual nature. Yes. We believe that there was two in us. There was the old man <laughs> and Jesus, and they were constantly at war. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, I, I remember when I saw this scripture, I think it's Romans 6, 6. Yeah. Yeah. And Romans being the sixth book in the New Testament. Yeah. Right. Okay, so you got 666. Six, six. Oh, and what is 666? Six, six, six? Man making himself God. That's right. Okay. It says, knowing this, you got to know this. Our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Listen. If you don't know that the old man is dead, you're going to serve sin. Mm. You've got to know the old man is dead. Mm. So this that we thought was a dual nature is no more than a double-minded man. Mm. A double-minded man. What did uh, James say? Unstable in all his ways. <laughs> yeah. 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 James chapter one, it says, hmm. if any man, verse five, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. He doesn't shame you for asking. Right. And it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. What does that mean to ask in faith, not wavering? To ask knowing that your father is a good, good father. Yes. And it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes. It says, for he that wavereth, that's vacillating back and forth. Mm-hmm. Like the waves of the sea. For he wavereth like the waves of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let that man, let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. Mm. A double minded man is unstable all in ways. all his ways. Yeah. So, you know. The scripture tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand in the evil day. Mm. To stand in the evil day against the wiles of the devil. Mm. How in the world can we stand against the wiles of the devil when we don't even know who we are? Because that whole armor of God is no more than the gospel. You know, yeah. you've got your heart um, protected uh, with the breastplate of righteousness. You know who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when those accusations come against you, well, look at what you did. When you've got the breastplate of righteousness on, you're able to withstand the fiery darts of the devil because you have the faith of the Son of God. You know, it's not about you and your behavior. It's about Jesus Christ and what he did for you. Amen. Yeah. And if we don't know that, we get a contradiction. Yeah. The truth. And, and the thing is, so many Christians don't realize that um, our stability mm. is found in righteousness. Mm. Mm. What does he say? He, he says, I remember the scripture coming to me. Um, your, you will, your strength will be in righteousness. What is mm. that? 
they were looking to hire a pagan nation to help them. And the mm. Lord was telling them to come on to him. I'll mm. let you carry on while I find that scripture. Well, one thing that a couple of things came to me while you were, you mentioned that uh, about the uh, double mindedness was, and I heard this, I love this. Uh, it says that the resurrection of Jesus was the proof of what really died at the cross. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and the old man died. I mean, it was taken away, you know, and now we're a new creation in Christ. And single mindedness is to see our union with God in Christ. Amen. Perfect union. And that God, uh, and also what the Lord's been, you know, um, drawing my attention to is the love and the care that the Father has for us, you know? And uh, he demonstrated that love and care, okay? The word became flesh, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he, the word became flesh to, to demonstrate the love and the care of the Father. Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right. Yep. You know? And so that double-mindedness <clears throat> to me is, and that it all ties together that evil day is any day that's that right. the accuser comes and says that God doesn't care for your life, right. that you're an that's orphan, that you have to care for your own life. And he, he, he paints the picture of the daisy, you know, he loves me. He loves me not, <laughs> you know, that's double minus. That's a picture of double minus. He loves me. He loves me not, yeah. you know? Really? And so that's just that, that place of not understanding and being fully, fully persuaded about the love and care of the Father. And I want to inject this, too, while you're getting ready to read that. Mm -hmm. But in that, I'm starting to see what his righteousness really is. And that's really about his love and care mm -hmm. for us. His righteousness. He demonstrated his love and care for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really is about having a heart persuaded uh, to uh, believe that God is for us, not against us. Amen. You know, his righteousness. And that's where this, our strength comes from. Knowing that the Father does care for us. Absolutely. You know? And that nothing will ever separate us. What can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus? I love that Romans 8 because <clears throat> if you ever are tempted to go that double-minded, you know, when the accuser comes, just Read Romans 8. Yeah. <laughs> and what can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ, you know? And that's yeah. what it's all about. Amen. Hey, right. like if Jesus can't be separated from God, yeah. then neither can we. That's because right. we are the righteousness of Christ. And that is the faith of the, of the Son of God. That everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to us. Yeah. So Jesus knew that God was good. And... Uh, and we can know that God is good and that in the evil day, we cry out to Abba. That's right. And then we're right in the place where, where Jesus is. And he does that in us automatically as we keep hearing the gospel. That's it. We, we just know to cry out to, to Abba in the evil day. Absolutely. Or in the evil thought, right? Even in the evil thought, we just cry out to Abba. Yeah. Yeah. What's beautiful is that we're actually beginning to hear the gospel. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you know, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Scripture says it's a good thing that a heart, that a man's heart is established in grace. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that word establish, it's unmovable. I mean, you can't be knocked off your feet, okay? Established. And, and then we see in Isaiah 54, it says, in righteousness, thou shalt be established. Mm -hmm. You can't be established any other way. Mm. And realizing, I mean, I used to read that through the carnal mind and think that I've got to be better. I've got to do better. Mm -hmm. I've got to act better. But that the, the scripture qualifies itself in saying that their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord in yeah. verse 17. Mm -hmm. 
This is not a works righteousness. This is a righteousness that is gifted That's to right. us. Gift. Okay. And the scripture that, I, that came to my mind was in Isaiah 30, verse 15, when they were relying on Egypt. Mm. What's Egypt? Yeah. Symbolic of the world. The world. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so they were looking to <clears throat> Egypt to deliver them. Oh, if you're looking for the world to deliver you, you are really a creep. Look around. <laughs> yeah. And so it says in verse 15, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. Boom. Mm. <laughs> when you come to know the love that the Father has for you, Yes. Return to the Father and you rest in his great love. It yes. says you'll be saved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in quiet, yeah. Isn't that like God? Isn't yeah. he just like God? He's not going to be outdone. Amen. He's like, you want to be saved? Well, this is the way you do it. You do nothing. You just trust <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing? What? Yeah. yeah. It says, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Yeah. I love that. Quietness. <laughs> quietness and confidence, not okay. by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Mm. He says, and you would not. He's talking to Israel. He's telling them the way to go to be safe, and they wouldn't have anything. Mm. It says, but you said, no, mm. <laughs> or we will flee on horses. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this ourselves. Therefore, Trust shall you, <laughs> yep, we will ride upon the swift. Therefore, shall they that pursue you be swift. Mm. 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one. This, you know, in Joshua, the Lord told them that one would put 1,000 to flight, two would put 10,000 to flight. I think that's in Joshua 23.10. But this is when your confidence is in the Lord. One of you will put 1,000 to flight. Yeah. But he's like, okay, this is the reverse now. You're not putting your trust in me. So a thousand of you are going to flee at one. Mm. Mm. At the rebuke of five, shall ye flee? Till ye be left as a beacon on the top of a mountain and as a sign upon a hill. But look what the Lord says. This is so beautiful. This is the heart of the Father. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. Wow, wow. That's so good. I mean, wow. You know, what, what a diametrically opposed uh, view of God this is to what the church has been teaching. Mm. You know, it's like, if you blow it, he's going to crush you like a bug. And here we have the where <laughs> they are putting their trust in the arm of flesh. And what is God's response to them? The Lord will wait. He'll be patient that he may be gracious to you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For why? Because the Lord is a God of judgment. Yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. That's no. good. Oh. He's a God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait upon him. Yes. So he's merciful. The Lord, it says that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Because the Lord is a God of judgment, 
he will have mercy on you. Mm. Well, what is he judging? He's judging these little puppies or don't know what they're doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. Just, yeah. The scripture says in Isaiah 42, let me turn the 42. It says, verse one, behold my servant, speaking of Jesus, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And that word judgment mm. means justice mm. and righteousness mm. and reveal truth. Mm. Isn't it a beautiful thing when you start understanding what judgment really is? Oh, yeah. You know, Jesus says, for judgment, I've come into the world so that those who are blind can see. Yeah. To reveal truth. To reveal truth. That's so that right. they might bear, bear yep. fruit, not produce fruit. Right. You know, and how that it's always been God who has wanted to serve us with the fullness of his life. Yeah. He yeah. is not, he's not this narcissist that we painted him to be, wow. you know, that he's demanding uh, uh, us to serve him right. so that he can be happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's so powerful. Like it's speaking to me because um, it's reminding me in 2002 um, during the, you know, times like the really, really chaotic time when my marriage was falling apart and the church had been persecuting me. I lost everything. I was in the middle of losing everything. And, um, and I had just met my spiritual mom who had reached out to me through Morningstar school, um, online school I was a part of at the time. Mm -hmm. um she reached out to me and man she became um such a oh a, a mighty mighty i just i mean she she went to be with jesus new year's day 2019 but um i went to stay with her in louisiana just like an hour from slidell for 10 days in 2002 um and she ministered to me for 10 days and I would like in the midst of losing everything, I was like, I didn't know where, like my faith was like in crisis, like, you know, Beulah described it last week. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. and she was ministering to me about like the strength of the horse and like, and then there was a horse behind the trailer beside her house that I stayed in while she met. I stayed there all by myself. It was awesome. And I loved horses and she knew it. So she brought the, the horse over one day, tied it to the, um, the, the trailer. I got up and there was this horse outside and I knew that I was supposed to ride it. Just, you know, it was all saddled up. So I took it for a ride up and down the road and uh, it, it was just wonderful, but on the last day that I was there, because I, I still, she was, she was, like, now I know, like, remembering that these scriptures that she was talking about was not to put my strength in anything that I could grab hold of, which I was doing. Mm. I was trying to grab hold of anything possible. Mm -hmm. Thank God I, he gave me her to grab hold of. Because that time, those 10 days sustained me for the next 10 years when that verse that Beulah read um, came to pass. And that was the vision I had the day before I left. I seen myself riding that horse through like this dark, it was a tunnel and we were going into the tunnel, but I like it was a dark tunnel. And it was really weird. I was like, I knew it was from God. And I thought that's pretty scary. But um, when I share it with Pat, she, she knew what it meant. But um, she just said, you know, just commit it to God and, um, you know, whatever. But um, I mean, I was, I was 10 years in that tunnel, it relying on my own strength. Mm. 
right? To try to get my kids back, to try to get my life back, to, you know, and um, because they're, you know, being persecuted for believing in the grace message and having no other, um, no other, like, there was not nobody else other than Patricia that, Patricia and Lewis, my friends, that believed in uh, the gospel of grace, but she was also ministering to my husband. And after he like decided to go back to the world, like he turned his back on Christ and Christianity and, and we, you know, he divorced me. So I, I just, I, like my attitude at that time was you have her, right? Have her because like he was taking everything else it was just a rebellious sort of attitude and so I never bothered to reach out to her I was kind of mad at her right I was mad at a lot of people I was mad at God even mm. but I mean you read in that scripture about um him being merciful to me exactly and bringing me back right brought me back 10 years later Right in 2012, 2013, when I found Greg and Bertie and Dynamic Love Love Church and all that. Mm. So, I mean, that's great to hear the yeah. other side of it, right? That he will be merciful to me and, 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 re, and reveal his judgment and knowing what his judgment is. Yeah. It's exactly that, right? I love that, how really the, the word brought you, the word of life brought you back. The word of his mercy brought you back exactly yeah. into, out of your mind into his mind exactly totally we're out of, you, we when it, there's times where we're out of his mind <laughs> yeah and here it is like 10 years back into his mercy being refreshed in his mercy and his grace daily all day long every day for 10 years straight and it's like you know it's I know to cry out to Abba so that that double-mindedness can't creep back in there, you know, yeah. because I know where it leads. I don't want to go back down that dark tunnel. It's not fun. When they're done that, bump a t-shirt, you know? Yeah. You know, a lot of uh, people don't understand grace and how grace works, you know? Grace mm -hmm. actually is, is the father at work, bringing forth the fruit of his life in your life. But oftentimes we don't allow God to work. You know, we don't allow God to yep. work. We will reach out for comfort in other places. I say, like, it could be Southern comfort. It could be comfort food. It could be whatever, you know, but we've all done, been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Right. Okay. Well, I know. And, and it's deceiving, you know, because <clears throat> when, when you, like, I mean, as a young Christian, when I, when I, like, became uh, like awakened to the grace of God. I was raised in legalism. I was a Christian. I was born again into legalism. Then I uh, had a grace awakening when I was 22, stayed in it for 10 years. And then it was like taken away because it was persecuted and judged to be evil, right? By everyone around me, except my husband. But the judgment of it being evil had such a, a, a sour effect on his whole entire Christianity that he just, he, he couldn't, he couldn't even love me anymore because to love me would have to be to, to remain in the faith, which he just couldn't do. And um, so that was the deception that, okay, well, you know, I had a Christian doctor tell me that this is what God wants you to do. So any authority figure, and that's what, you know, the enemy will do. I mean, he, he's, he's deceptive. If you find yourself in a time of crisis and you're not surrounded by fellowship and friends that, you know, are, aren't legalistic, like this is what you got to do. I had so many Christians telling me, this is what you got to do. They were dropping books on my door, the power of a praying wife, you know, and all of those, you know, spiritual warfare books of the day. 
<laughs> and I mean, I, I tried all of them, uh, you know, for years and years. I just never gave up yeah. trying them. It's not that it's you didn't try. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had, I had written this down, you know, and what, what happens is we quit trying and start trusting, you know. Yes. Trusting God to, to show up. And, and to bring forth the fullness of his life. And he is, and we talked about this, that gar God is the gardener. Yeah. You know, he's the one uh, that brings the increase. And uh, the carnal mind does not understand uh, anything apart from the arm of the flesh to, to do it because the carnal mind is a mind born out of death that thinks it has to clothe itself with life. So that's what it's driven by. And it's just, it's, it's the same mind that the Pharisees had, okay? Where Jesus says, no, your father is the devil. You are, you are, uh, you know, this wisdom is really not, you know, from the right place. And it's, it's really, and the flesh hates, <clears throat> the reason the flesh, um, it's amazing, but the flesh, those that are walking in a carnal religion, flesh, uh, will actually look at grace as almost evil yeah like it's a license to sin because it's it's and the reason it, it's the flesh doesn't like grace is because grace um takes away all the bragging rights of the flesh that's absolutely it yeah i mean what did it what brought about the persecution by the christian community around me was when like at our home church that we had um i began like pointing out about tithing and they all tithe right and our best friends were elders in the church and and she was my best friend and she got the revelation about you know putting her trust in tithing that if she you know she believed that because she was tithing that's why god was blessing them financially right and she got the revelation that it wasn't true, but she didn't. She didn't want to. She didn't want to give up tithing because giving up tithing meant she couldn't be an elder in the church. And if she couldn't be an elder in the church, she couldn't be a highly respected member of the community, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of submitting to the truth, she persecuted me. Like she went after me. Like. I was Jezebel, you know, yeah. and, and started spreading those rumors. I mean, it's, it's really, it really does uh, bother people. Well, <laughs> you know, God, yeah, go when ahead. You, when you said that your husband um, couldn't take the persecution, you know, that Grace brought, a scripture came to my mind and an understanding uh see he didn't he didn't know grace no i know that and, now yeah okay he he was persecuted for a word okay yeah. and the scripture that came to my heart was first john uh 2 18 let's see what is start Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Mm -hmm. But they went out that it might be made manifest. They were not of us. And so true grace is the revelation of who you truly are. Yeah. Absolutely. That your father, your father, uh, you are accepted in the beloved. Mm -hmm. And you don't care. That's right. What people think. Jesus yeah. said to, Jesus said to the Pharisees, he says, How can you believe? when you care more about what people think than that's what right God yeah and that was his salvation experience from the first time 
it was like maybe six weeks after our grace awakening and for him salvation it was like but he shared the gospel with someone while he was like out driving during work he drive for a living at a gas station and um how he shared it was probably really religiously like you know, repent or go to hell or something. I don't know. But the guy said, get away from me, Bible thumper, right? He told me about it when he got home. And from that day on, he never shared the gospel again. So his his experience was like the word in the seed of the sower that goes out. And yeah. when persecution comes, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that happened really early on. But I didn't understand that until like later and then looking back, right? Because and, I mean, I gave him know. grace. I gave him grace for those yeah. years that we were. And, and Corey, the Lord is waiting to be gracious sure. unto him. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. And, and people are just blind to the, um, Truth. it says in 2 Corinthians 4, three through six, it says, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled. Now we're talking about the gospel, right? Yeah, right. Grace. That yeah. includes those outside, but inside the house. But yeah. like the elder brother, he was lost inside the house. Yeah. Oh, wow. It is That's so good. Those, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine to them. For we do not preach our, ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bond servants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. And I, start, I just read this today, and I said, you can also say this, this light has shown in our hearts to give us light to the love and the care that the Father has always had for us. Mm -hmm. See, God, you know, what's, what's happening is a lot of church does, do not know the love and the care of the Father. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's why they're still, they're still in this, uh, they're, they're veiled to it. They're veiled to the gospel of what's already been accomplished for them. And so... <clears throat> I mean, I can, I consider myself because I used to stand on corners and, and preach turn or burn, you know, that's not how I came in. Now, this is the amazing thing. How I came in was I had a, I said, what's life all about? I wasn't saved in church, in a church building, but mm -hmm. God showed up in a room, in my room. And he showed me what life was all about. And he didn't show me an angry God. He showed me a God that was passionately in love yeah. with me. And he pointed me to the cross. He says, this is what life is all about. And I was filled with the fullness of his life. Okay. And then I got in, invited to church. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like a system. Yeah. It was all downhill from there where I began to then preach a message of basically God's angry with you, turn or burn. You know, so I, it's the same had, with all those uh, that were part of my fellowship that I loved. I mean, like my best friend and her husband, right? They, that I was saying that, you know, didn't like that, the tithe re revelation. They were bikers. Like they, they, she was an alcoholic and they had a real encounter with Jesus Christ too. And yeah. then went to church. So, I mean, <laughs> I just keep believing that God's gonna, oh, you know, yeah bring them back our, as father well. cares, our father cares for him he says you know jesus yeah. said beware of the leaven of the pharisees okay and of herod so there's that 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 religious of you know it's all born out of the carnal mind okay yeah. it all has to do with uh really a word that's of accusation that's coming to them saying that God is something he's not and and really a word that's saying God doesn't really care for your life mm -hmm. he only cares for his own life and what you do for him that's the word yeah you know? and Jesus came the word became flesh and says no that's not true God loves you and does care for your life I <laughs> know it's like here to demonstrate that love so so what happens is 
as we've continued to believe the love the, and, and be established in the love and care of the Father, they will be able to see it, his love demonstrated in and through us. So we're not accosting people with scripture, you know, but they're starting to see the witness of, of the Father like, like Jesus came, you're right? to demonstrate and declare the father and that's what's going to eventually that's what will really it's the only thing that will turn their hearts around you know exactly yeah so. you know that scripture in um, second corinthians 4 where it says for god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness this is referring to genesis yeah when he said let there be light yeah he has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So this light, this awakening is found in the face of Jesus Christ, this glory of God. Yeah. Now look at the previous chapter in verse 17. It says in verse 18, um, no, chapter 3, verse 18, but we all with an open face, an unveiled face, we're beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, where is this glory? It's in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm. So as we, it says, you're beholding in the face of Jesus Christ, the glory of God as in a mirror. Mm. Okay. Oh, wow. What it's saying is Jesus Christ is mirroring the glory of God that is in you. Amen. Because Jesus Christ, Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay. And so Jesus was the express image of the Father. But he also was son of man. Mm -hmm. So he was the express image of human. Mm -hmm. So in looking into the face of Jesus Christ, you can see too. You can see who the Father is, and you can see who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Because as he is, so are you. Jesus Christ is the revelation of God the Father, and Jesus Christ is a revelation of human, the way Amen. God created human to be. Of us. I'm seeing it for the first time. This is so good that like I could see myself looking in the in the mirror through the face of Jesus Christ. So through his eyes seeing my nose right and my lips that that's pretty powerful it just sort of kind of happened as you were reading it i never looked at it that way i could kind yeah. of never grasp that because greg described um he he said it a few times that he looked in the mirror and god said to him um you know that you're you're looking at the glory of god right and that was a testimony that exactly. he shared a few times but when you put those two scriptures together, mm. the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, and then you go with an unveiled face as in a mirror, we're beholding the glory of the Lord. Well, you can only see that you are the glory of God through the face of Jesus Christ. You can't find it any other way. No, it's so <laughs> beautiful because God has put this in the face of Jesus Christ. He's honoring the son. Yes. If you have the son, you have the father. If you don't have the son, you don't have the father. Well, how can I find this glory of God? There's only one place. It's in the face of Jesus Christ. So good. It's awesome. You know, I was looking at uh, Galatians uh, 6, 1, who, as we were talking, and uh, um, it says, if, if uh, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, 
you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted, bear one another burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. Of course, we always used to look at that as, oh, if I see someone involved in some yucky behavior, you know, or whatever. But really, it's talking about this trespass is really looking to the world to care for your life. Yeah. You know, or, or or having this veil, not seeing, really. Yeah. Forget and, uh, who you are. Yeah, yeah. forget who you are. Yeah. So you who are spiritual, who who the veil has been removed, you understand and see, okay, what God sees, okay? Yeah. Basically, that's it. it it's bringing them back into the mind of Christ. Exactly. You know? Right, reminding them who they are. But gently, but gently considering yourself. In other right. words, I've been yeah. there, bought many t-shirts, you know, <laughs> and uh, I've had those fluctuations. I've had those double mind experiences, yeah. you know, and so I understand, you know, but it's really, it's the gospel again. It's the gospel is, it's proclaiming the good news of what, of what God through Christ has already accomplished. And you know, when, as you're talking, um, remembering you know, it says, um, with a spirit of meekness, with mm -hmm. humility. You know what? Every time we screw up, <laughs> it adds to our humility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? God is not a waster. No. God is, I know that I know that I know this. Mm -hmm. God is not a waster. No. But no. he will take everything all things not some things all things work together for the good to those that love god and are called according to his purpose even our shortcomings yeah, yeah. even our shortcomings they are they are a building tool because in those times that we've got to help somebody else who we've got to track <laughs> of our mess ups and it keeps us humble you yeah. know i mean don't ever think that you're you're it baby you know i mean we have all uh eaten a pound of dirt <laughs> you know well and that's what that does it it opens their heart up you know it mm -hmm. keeps them from throwing up some kind of you know defense yeah. thing you know because listen you're saying, hey, I know, you know, I've eaten dirt myself. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I've eaten a lot of dirt. <laughs> Only God knows how much dirt I've eaten. <laughs> yeah. But it's, but it's been a lot. Yeah. <laughs> until, until I got tired of, of tasting the dirt, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm tired of this dirt. We were talking about that this morning, how sometimes we hear the word and we think, oh, I've got it, you know, and then a certain oh, yeah. thing happens and we go, oh, I don't think I have it. You know, <laughs> the reaction is not what we wanted it to be because we really didn't have it. And Rick says, well, that is a blessing. You know, yes. that you went through that and you saw, because then you can come back to the mirror, look again yes. and say, okay, you know, show me Jesus. And as he is, so am I. Yeah, you know, we just keep coming back. We're seeing that yucky, that yucky fruit, you know, that fruit of death can actually be a blessing because it, it says, uh, I'm not looking right. I'm not thinking. Hey, where your thoughts are and yeah. what, you, what you're considering That's right. and, because of what is manifesting. Deanne, when you were saying what you were saying, this scripture came to my mind. Knowledge puffs up. Mm. Charity, love, edifies. If any man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing. As he ought. <laughs> yeah, as he ought to know. If if a person thinks, I got it. I know it all. You don't, you don't know. Baby. You got it. You, you know what? You were being upheld by the grace of God. Yeah. Don't think for one minute that you're standing on your own two feet, honey. And the minute you think you are, you're going down like a ton of bricks. 
Yeah. Well, it's like the branch. It's like, and it brings me to this point. I was looking at this morning. It's like the branch boasting. Yeah. Of all its knowledge or fruit it's producing, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and the branch can only bear fruit, you know, from the vine, you know. Without the vine, we we got nothing. Right. You got that right. Nada, you yeah, know. So it's not what what we've got, but who's got us? Who's got us? <laughs> That's right. Who we're attached to? It's not what. It's not what we've, uh, you know, achieved, but it's about who we're attached to and who, about who we're in. Yeah. And uh, we were looking at this one scripture in John um, 15 and how we used to really, through the carnal mind, interpret that. And it used to be a scripture that we would avoid because it would bring much condemnation and even torment to us because we thought we were the ones that had to produce the fruit or we would be cut off <laughs> right yeah <laughs> so absolutely. one says i'm the true vine my father is the vine dresser or the gardener or you could say the farmer yeah. the one yeah. that brings forth the fruit right every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit and so we used to always look at that takeaway as, you know, God's God is the one that's looking for production, you know, and if he doesn't see the production, then you could be cut off, <laughs> you know, and cast away. Right. Yeah. So until we understood that that word take away means to lift up. Yeah. And that's where we under we we're starting to see how important the definition of words really are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He actually lifts if he doesn't see us manifesting you know, that fruit, then he actually lifts it. He he brings a word of encouragement to, to lift us. Well, right? look at it like this. If you're not bearing fruit, mm -hmm. you're weak. And what does the good shepherd do? Mm -hmm. He don't have to carry the strong ones. But that yeah. little weakling that can't walk, he'll pick it up and put it around his neck. Yeah. When I see that scripture in John 15, that those that don't bear fruit, he picks it up and he carries it. I see the good shepherd with that little weak sheep around his neck, mm. speaking sweet things into his ear. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, little one, you'll be strong one day. Just hang out with me. I'll show you how it goes. <laughs> Well, that vine dresser, you know, they they say, you know, if a uh, in a vineyard, if there's a, a branch or a, a vine down in the earth, into the dirt, you know, it's down in the dirt that it it he lifts it up. The vine dresser lifts it up off of the earth. Yeah. And so it's mm -hmm. actually being too earthly wow. minded. See, mm. it's being too carnal minded, and that's that's the reason. Okay, so he sees that he lifts it up. Yeah. He lifts us up from the earth. And they'll often actually even tie that vine to another vine, which which to me shows the importance of these Zoom meetings and gathering yeah. together because we're tied together. We all each of us need that encouragement or that lifting up, that edification, right, yeah. that, that each of us bring through the word of life uh, because we're in this world. We're in it. We're surrounded by a world of that's contradiction, and even a, a lot of our, most religion is telling us the opposite of the gospel. So, we do need a, this this time to be, you know, to connect, you know, and yeah. to to hear the word of life that's able to save our soul, you yeah. know, it's able to keep us uh, set where we need to be set. Amen. Hey, Amen. Yeah. There's there's a uh, a component there that even though we have good speakers and and most everybody has something good to say, right. nevertheless, when we listen, we can find things that we didn't know we had, and we can contribute to things yeah. that the whole body can receive from. Yeah. But we have to have a sensitivity to yeah. the when yeah. to speak and when to be quiet. That's you know? right. Yeah, God is God is teaching us to be good listeners. I think. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and and I think that that is how the early church functioned. You know, yeah. 
spontaneous combustion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Spirit spark life. Absolutely. And we're a body and yeah. we all have something that we can contribute. Absolutely. That's right. uh, a scripture came to my mind as, you know, we were talking about um, in meekness, mm -hmm. let him be spiritual, let him bring somebody back uh, into remembrance of who yeah. they are. It's uh, Jeremiah 9, 23. It says, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, mm. that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, yeah. which exercise loving kindness, that's hasid, mm. that's the closest word in the Old Testament to our New Testament word grace, mm. loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Yeah. And do you know in Galatians 6 14, Paul echoes this sentiment. Mm. But God forbid that I should glory. Yeah. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ, by mm. whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Mm. Mm. Got it. I don't glory in anything but knowing God. Mm. And there would be no way for us to come to know who the Father truly was without the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the only thing to glory in. And perfect forgiveness, like the once and all forgiveness. That's, you know, that's it because that's what it really has, you know, it, it just, it, it enables me to just speak to anyone that knowing that they're just as forgiven as I am. That's like right. anybody. Yeah. Like the other day on uh, Saturday night, I went to the VON, the nurse nursing clinic to have my bandages changed. And uh, wow, this guy comes in and he, was dropped off by a cab so he he had crutches he could barely open the door right so I go and I'm the only one in there so I help him in the door and in the waiting room and um he had it, it, he had a brace on his hip so that it looked like he had had a hip procedure or something but shorts on and his legs were like covered in blisters that were like the size of golf balls and his oh. his entire feet and he could like hardly walk and it's not very often like only one other time since i've been going there in uh, since october have i had to wait for like usually i'm i'm in there less than five minutes they call me in right but I had time to sit there probably about half an hour and talk with this guy. Like I had such compassion for him and the condition he was in. He had just had a hip procedure, he said. And um, throughout the day, that's what developed on his legs. And he didn't know how or why or what. So, I mean, I was just, I just loved him. And I've been it was so good for me because I like the month of June was just really rough for me. And mm -hmm. I was starting to, you know, not see the end of this whole going there and getting these stupid bandages changed, not knowing nothing. Right. And, um, when I, after my encounter with that guy, it was like, every time I feel like negativity is coming because of that, I pray for him instead of, instead of looking at myself, yeah. I pray for that guy. And it's brought such um, a powerful, you know, new experience into my life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just knowing the forgiveness and it, of God in through the gospel, you know, has got a lot of power in it. <laughs> you know, that, uh, and it, and we, we, Sometimes we need to touch on that for the sake of those that are hearing 
because so many things have been misunderstood and that's the word forgiveness and what that yeah. means. And, you know, we have, uh, you know, the carnal mind again has come up with thinking that forgiveness is that God was angry at our behavior and had to find a way in his heart to forgive us. Mm -hmm. So he sent Jesus in order to save um, us from him. <laughs> But, uh, and so, and we, it's awesome how, and Birdie and, and different ones have, have brought the true meaning of forgiveness that is that really it's about being divorced uh, from the old man, from sin and death, okay? That was uh, blinding us, that was causing us to think that life was what we had to, we had to care for our own lives, right? Yeah. And that, for, that we have been forgiven of sin which is sin most of the time is a noun not a verb okay but if forgiven or divorced from that which was oppressing us that which was was you know was a weight on us okay. heavy weight that was pushing us down it's like the the woman who was i was thinking about the woman who was uh with uh, was um crippled the crippled woman who was, oh, yeah. her yeah. face was down and she was released from that well she was forgiven of that that weight that sin that was oppressing her and causing her to think that life was what she she had to care for her own life yeah you know? yeah and all that sent away that's what it means to send that's away true. Send, away. Send, yeah. send it all away the old man the behavior the fruit like everything that has to do with that old life is yeah. sent away right. and that it really is powerful when we've received that to be able to see every single like to me it's just a lot of strangers i just end up you know talking and meeting with a lot of strangers at walmart or you know the drugstore you know wherever i go and that's the way I see them. Just it's it's effortless just to see that whatever it is that they're struggling with, God has sent away. And I see, you know, I just see them the way God sees them. You know, yeah. it's well, it's just like in I think Greg preaches some well, I know he did preach it some time ago, where the the it's a picture of you know the Pharisees you know they they took this woman who was caught in the act of adultery you know and they threw her down they cast her down and that's what yeah. sin is. it casts you down it casts you down and it accuses you and condemns you okay and uh and so what did jesus do he stooped down you know yeah and he, he, he lifted her up and says i do not condemn you go and sin no more which is really be released from this thing that's been oppressing you from this mindset from this blindness you know from this way of thinking that you have to care for your own life but you have you you have a, a father that cares for you okay yeah. and it's just like it just it's just such an amazing picture and that's what people need to hear they need yes. to, they need to hear that, that, that there is one that really loves and cares for you, That's okay? Right. You have a father. It's the same father of us all. There's one father of us yeah. all, you know? And Jesus came to do something about this, this, uh, this sin and death that's been reigning over the world and oppressing the world, you know? And so, and it's through the gospel as we can, as we believe the gospel of what Christ has already accomplished, it says the power, the gospel is the power of God yeah. unto salvation so that we can reign in life now. Okay. Yeah. Even though we see still the death all around us, still, still see corruption and injustice, we can reign in life right now through the gospel, you know, because it's not something we have to wait for you know, to happen, but that same life that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, and that same spirit, you know, that same spirit that, that was in Christ is in us crying, Abba, Father, you know, he's showing us that God is Abba, our Father, that he, he is the one that loves us and does care for our life in the midst of whatever may be happening, it doesn't matter. But uh, that is, to me, the power 
people need to understand the power of his resurrection. You know, Paul says, I just want to know him and the power of his resurrection, what it means to really reign in life, you know? And so I, we see that a lot in the early church. And I looked at that way back years ago. I said, what did they have? What were they drinking? You know, they didn't the church because they were beaten and threatened. They were beaten, beaten, mm -hmm. physically beaten and threatened not to preach. And yet they left rejoicing that yeah. they could suffer yeah. from his namesake. I said, whatever yeah. they were drinking, I want it. <laughs> yep. Because I'm not seeing that in most of the yeah. churches. Oh. They're, they're fighting over the color of the carpet in the church. Right. Like, not oh. seeing that myself, that I would want to be beaten or, you know, stoned. <laughs> or Stephen, Stephen Stone. You know, he was yeah. reigning in life. He was reigning in life. Where he could he could actually say, Father, don't do not lay this into their charge, just like Jesus was reigning in life on the cross. You know, that's the kind of life that is a reality. It's not just something that we can, you know, it's something, it's a fruit that God desires to, to bring forth in our life, in this life, in this mortal yeah. flesh. So back to forgiveness. Yeah. Um, Faith can't apprehend anything that's not already there. It's finished. Yeah. Okay. Um, receive forgiveness of sins. Receive it. Well, you can't receive forgiveness of sins unless sins have already been forgiven. Right. Okay. Yeah. Don't think about that. Mm -hmm. We've had it. The church has had it backwards. Mm -hmm. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin. <laughs> yeah. Well, he already did. He already did. <laughs> and he can't forgive you of your sins unless he already has. <laughs> you know, the scripture in Acts 13, 38. Tip, tipping over those golden cows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Yes. He's done it. Mm -hmm. He's already done it. God was in Christ reconciling the whole world back to himself, not imputing their trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. So he's, all he's asking us to do is believe it. You know, Jesus, this, okay, go ahead. This man is preached the forgiveness of sins. That's the gospel. Jesus Christ divorced us from sin. Sin was in Adam. Sin was in the first creation. Christ is the last Adam. And what Jesus, the last Adam did was take the first Adam and all of his seed into himself mm -hmm. and die our union to Adam away. So then the whole human race was raised up mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ. Mm. Brand new creation. Mm. Now, can you believe it? When you believe it, you will receive the benefit of that brand new life that is in Jesus Christ. And he says, by him, all the believe yeah. are justified from all things mm -hmm. from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Man, that needs to be tattooed on our forehead so every Christian can see it. Yeah. Why are you trying to be justified by the law when you can never be justified by the law? You can only be justified by Jesus Christ. Beware, therefore, lest it come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets, Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. 
Wow. It's so oh, powerful. Oh, my God. Let's you know, tell you, you won't get it. <laughs> I was the looking Holy at Ghost it. Ghost has got to tell you. In Acts 28, uh, he, he says, you know, the call of Paul, he says, he says, I will, in Acts 20, 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. And then he says this, to open their eyes mm -hmm. in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me yes so yeah. you've already been they've already been forgiven the whole world's been forgiven yeah. it's really a matter of them being persuaded right to believe yeah. and see what's already taken place so you know but religion wants them you know wants them to jump through all these hoops yeah. you know they actually want them to they start them out by thinking oh i've got to do something first in order to be forgiven well, yeah. one thing you need to do is to believe, you know, you know that you are forgiven. When you look at it, <laughs> <you're so laughs> okay, what is it? <laughs> if, if you believe the gospel, if you believe the truth, your eyes are open, okay? Now, if you're not a believer of the gospel, then you're in one or two categories. You're either of them that believe them, not as they ought to be, mm -hmm. and ain't trying to do anything about it, <laughs> <laughs> or you're in religion, and you believe you're not as you ought to be, and you're on the treadmill trying to do something about it. Well, let me ask you something. Which one do you, would you sooner did, preach the gospel to? Not the one that's trying to get there mm -hmm. by his own strength, <laughs> but the guy that says, I just can't do nothing. Yeah. I'm a mess. I'll go, I'll take that one. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just blindness, man. Yeah. It's just so blind. And as <laughs> as uh as we were talking on Sunday when we were talking about something. I don't know what we were talking about. But <laughs> the gospel, I'm sure. Yeah, it was good. But I just had one of those Kavor moments mm -hmm. where I saw that when you got a person that is telling you how great they are and what they've done, they are just they feel buck naked. Yeah. And they're trying to clothe themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and what brings this forth? Mm -hmm. What brings this forth in a person that someone, you know, will do that? It's like you tell somebody Jesus loves you and they automatically say, well, you know, I'm a good person and I help people and I blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah. Well, I, why I'm going to heaven. And they're like, well, how do you know you're going to heaven? I said, because Jesus died for me. That's why. Nothing that I've done. I mean, I can put a crack in the door to get in there by my own works. It's only Jesus. What? It's so simple. Jesus is the doorman. If you're trying to get in any other way, you're a thief and a robber. <laughs> what do you mean a thief and a robber? Oh, you're trying to steal the glory from Christ to yourself? Yeah. I did it. Well, you know, in Jesus' ministry, <clears throat> earthly ministry, he didn't. He didn't ask. He didn't tell people. Well, you need to repeat this prayer, mm -hmm. okay, so that you'll be forgiven. No, he said, "Your sins are forgiven. Believe it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, you know, uh, all, all these hopes and stuff that that yes. tries to get people to jump through it's 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 deceptive it's mm -hmm. not right you know and that confess you know the first john 1 9 that's the the, the go-to scripture oh yeah well if you confess your sins and you know well confess means to agree with god about your sins that's all it means yeah. that your sins and iniquities i remember no more right so should we agree with god about what he's, he thinks about our sins right yeah, I was just reading that verse right before that, um, that Romans 9 or 10, 9, but 
Romans 10, 8 says, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. So we really have it, you know, that the word of faith that we proclaim, mm -hmm. if we confess with our mouth, even yeah. in your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in our heart, that God has raised him from the dead. So the truth is there in each person. They just have to mm -hmm. say yes to it with their yeah. mouth and believe in their heart, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's that scripture in John 1 9 says if we confess our sins, if we say the same thing, homo logeo, mm -hmm. together with the logos. What does the logo say? Exactly what you said, that I've taken your sins as far as the east is from the west, and I've thrown them into the sea of forgetfulness, and I remember them no more. Okay, so that's what I confess. Oh. When 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 something tries to speak to you, what do you confess? Jesus took away my sin. You know, that, that conscience that would try to bring you into condemnation. Jesus took away my sin. Mm. Okay? He says he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. So, he's cleansed me from all unrighteousness. So, what have I got to confess? If I've agreed with God right. that he took my sin away and he cleansed me from all sin and unrighteousness, then what's left to confess? What is left for me to, you know? And God is good. That's what there's left to confess. <laughs> they want you to be, this is your bar of soap. <laughs> this is it and i've heard it rip up to that this is our bottom soul oh my goodness it's not sick exactly. it's not yeah. Peaceful. yeah if it's your bar daily bar of soap what you're saying is jesus what jesus did wasn't enough exactly exactly that's back to you reminds me of a song that my kids used to listen to when they were little it used to have a have a line in it that washes us with super soap. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? I mean, really, it really does despite to the blood of Jesus Christ. It really does. It I really mean, does. let's face it, under the law, they felt clean for a year. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Christians can't even make it one day. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They're, they're, well, they're saying the, the blood of bulls and goats is more powerful than the blood of Jesus. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. He is a one-time sacrifice for sin and has perfected us forever. forever. A scripture keeps coming to me. Give the calves of our lips. Mm. The calves of our lips giving thanks. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta find that scripture. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read this. Were... Looking up that real quick, and this is, goes back to I love this. This uh, that we shared last week was this First John four uh, seventeen. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness or confidence in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this okay. world and seeing that that judgment is the day of crisis now that's mm -hmm. a game changer that's another game changer yeah. for me yeah. this, it's not you know this judgment in the future well we've already been judged righteous in christ okay yeah. uh the judgment has already been you know um and but that word judgment is a day of crisis you know too you know that day that uh that we the accuser comes yeah. that tries to accuse us and say that God isn't caring for your life, that God, <clears throat> that you are not who God says you are, that day of, of crisis, <clears throat> that God, well, we can have confidence in that day of crisis because we have been persuaded in our hearts fully to believe as he is, so are we in this world. And that doesn't change on our best day or worst day. I mean, 
as Christ is. That's why people say, how are you doing? I said, as good as Jesus, you know, <laughs> doing as good as, no matter what's going on around, you know, yeah. because uh, it's, it's about union, right? It's about seeing our union with God in Christ. Yeah. He that has been, he have that been joined to the Lord has become one spirit with him. You know, and seeing yes. our union with the Lord, it says, will flood our whole being with light. As he is glorious. Amen. <clears throat> that scripture was uh, Hosea 14, 2. He says, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. And we will render the calves of our lips. Mm. And the reference uh, New Testament, Hebrews 13, 15. By him, Jesus Christ, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving yeah. thanks. Mm. Yeah, that's what we do. You know, that, that scripture that says, David said, what shall I do to show my, my thankfulness? I know I'll take the cup of salvation mm. and I'll drink it to its dregs. Mm. Receiving the cup of salvation is, you know what pleases the Father? Drink the whole thing. Yes. Drink the whole thing. Receive everything. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that just gets me so excited because this is the Father's heart. He yeah. is, you know, what really pleases me? Yeah. If you will believe, yes. if you will believe what I have done for you in my son, Jesus Christ, and eat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Remembering the Passover, mm -hmm. they said, eat the whole thing. Right. Don't believe nothing left. Mm. He wants you to take a whole thing in. Mm. He wants you to take the full salvation in everything mm. that he has. Everything that is in the salvation, he wants you to experience it all. And that causes him to rejoice. Yes. No greater love, mm. no greater joy. That's what John said, the apostle of love. No greater joy. And I have than to know that my children walk in truth. Yeah. Sure. That's the father's heart. Sure nothing. Exactly. He said, I would that you prosper and be in health, even according to the prosperity of your soul. Mm. What is mm. the prosperity of your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. As our mind, and our will and our emotions are renewed by the spirit of God, mm. our whole triune being can receive everything mm. that he has given unto us. It, it is a pleasure father. to give us the kingdom, right? It is your father's good, good pleasure. pleasure. Good to pleasure give to give kingdom. you the kingdom. You can only receive it by believing. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we see in, in Hebrews 3, we see that they could not enter into his rest because of unbelief. Faith mm. comes by hearing and yeah. hearing by the word of God. And we need to hear and hear and hear. That's that right. hearing is a continuous hearing. Yeah. Mm. Not just drink, yeah, drinking the cup of salvation too, like in Matthew 20, I think it's 22, when the disciples um, mm had asked, asked Jesus um, if they could sit on the, the, the right hand, they were arguing. I think James and John were arguing if they could sit on the right and the left hand of, of Jesus when it, in, the, in the kingdom. And, he, and then he, he said, um, are you worthy to drink of the same cup that I, that I drank of? And yeah, 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 you know, sir. And he said, yeah, you will. You will drink of the same cup, the cup of salvation. But it's also the, the, the fellowship of his suffering. I mean, that's the cup of salvation is also 
drinking of the fellowship of the suffering. Like they really had no idea what, you know, what the cup of salvation was at that time, but was to, act, to actually, you know, to, to not only see Jesus crucified and go through those three days, right? And, um, and which was torture for them, you know, and that was, that was some suffering, right? That was part of the, the cup of salvation for those guys. So, I mean, there's so much to that. There's so much to that. Greg had mentioned that in the Zoom study I watched that he participated in after the conference or during the conference. And um, yeah, that's, that's a, a huge topic that I've been meditating on ever since. I listened to it, that Zoom Bible study, and then I watched it over the weekend uh, I think Sunday, I, I rewatched it. And it's always more powerful, like for me, um, in my, you know, fellowship with Jesus, I hear more through the spirit when I'm actually watching it. So I always watch it. I make sure that if I, if I listen to it, I also make, make sure I, I watch it as well. Probably a few times. <laughs> yeah. The I was referring to was in uh, Psalm 116. Uh, 12, where it says, David said, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits mm. toward me? Mm. I will take the cup of mm -hmm. salvation mm. and call upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. so I think in this respect, what David is talking about is he will make use of mm. all the salvation that the Lord has prepared for him. Mm. It's mm. just like that. Remember the scripture in John Lombano. He yes. kept to his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, gave he the power to become the sons of God. So in order to receive the power to become the sons of God, you've got to grab a hold of it. You've got to make use of it. And I think what David was saying, he was going to make use of everything that the cup of salvation um, pertained to. It seems, Amen. Like, it seems like just knowing about it is not enough. So we have to participate and receive. you got to receive it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's 11.25, folks. Time's gone by quick. I mean, there's a lot to twist on on that one. And I, I encourage people to, to like with just how we're ending this, to twist on that cup of salvation. Yes. Amen, yes. You know, because that is, uh, uh, um, uh, Gwen brought that forth during the conference. That's right. That's what Greg and, mentioned. Uh, that, yeah. That is, there's, there's so much more power, powerful things in that. You know, Jesus, one thing I was thinking, Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat fall to the ground, it dies. Die. It but if it dies, <laughs> it forth much fruit. So fruit, he said yeah. that, that it was actually through that death, that salvation, creation would be work. You know, yeah. we begin to the things that the world, you know, just again, they they look at as as death. You know, we embrace his life. It's nice. it's the opposite. That's the opposite. That's <laughs> so, right. This has and been you know, awesome. You know what Jim said? He said, he says it's not good enough to know it. You have to receive it. Right. And sometimes <laughs> we're not in a position to receive it. Because we haven't got there yet yeah because you don't think you need it mm -hmm. right <laughs> mm. yeah i don't yeah. think you need it That's but true. that circumstances turn on you mm -hmm. mm. and all of a sudden that cup of salvation looks mighty good <laughs> 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 that's good hey jim would you yeah. close us in a word of prayer sure Pastor. yeah, yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and, the, yes. and the, the wisdom that's been shared amongst yes. uh, the, this group. 
Lord, I just received so much from it. Lord, I pray that you'd call it, cause each of us to continue to grow in your faith and help us, Lord, to see as you see. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time and bless everyone that's here, Lord, that they would be encouraged even more. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. This Thank has been you. good. It's, been, yes. it's hard to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> The word is so rich. The word is so rich and so good. good We love you guys. Love Love you too. It's a pleasure. God bless. Bye. Bye.